At the highest level, I believe the future of music is unanticipated in the same way that you know, movies with sound were unanticipated, the LP, MTV. I think the revolution is yet to come with music, and it's going to be very, very radical because it's, it's not going to be listening to one-dimensional streams of sound. For something like 29,500 years, music has been a participatory experience where dancing, making music, and listening to music are all the same thing at the same time with everybody participating. Then it started becoming something you watch and listen to. That's not the ultimate form of music. That's actually the ultimate de-evolution of music. My name is Scott Snoopy. Often I tell people I make useless programs. Oh, this is awesome. Since I was a little kid, I always wanted to be some combination of an inventor and an artist. At age 10, I first saw the Apple II computer. As soon as I saw that, I thought, that's what I want to do with my life. I want to make interactive computer graphics. And I had no idea how that turns into a career or anything like that. I studied computer science and film, and that resulted in about 10 to 15 years of work that's just using your whole body and, and other people's bodies and space as an interface. Most of the work I do, it, it demands participation. The first piece I did around 1996 was called Boundary Functions. If one person goes on the floor, nothing happens. And then if another comes, all of a sudden there's a line between them and it becomes very dynamic, like that line you're never supposed to cross. The main inspiration behind almost everything I make in terms of this interactive visual music is nature. Nature is actually algorithmic. There's all these rules that underlie nature and that's why we see certain patterns all over the place. There's all these simple systems like physics from which an enormous complexity like our whole universe comes out of these seemingly like very simple rules. I've always been transfixed by these kind of natural phenomena like you know smoke wafting up or particles moving through water as water intersects and refracts. You're kind of connecting with inner algorithmic reality of your mind and to get back to what we were designed to perceive. And that perception actually gets into our creativity and the things that we say and think and create and so on. So that's the role of nature in human life is very, very important. A lot of people actually never see a stream or a sunset or a beach anymore. So what I try to do with these interactive pieces is make them the essence of nature. That short circuits right to this really, really deep primitive part of your brain that somehow understands without you knowing why the essence, the algorithms of nature. The Bjork project was kind of a dream project. She said, oh, I want to make this not just a CD or a record, but some sort of interactive experience. She wanted this album to be about something besides her own kind of experiences that she'd, she'd done in her prior albums. So the subject matter she took outside of herself was the entire universe. <laughs> Everything in the whole universe, from viruses to galaxies. Bjork is one of the few artists out there, I think, who really believes that electronic and digital technology can bring people closer to nature, but also convey something about nature with the most, quote, unnatural things, like electronic music. My studio produced the project, and you know, we created this first app album. What these apps do is actually give an ordinary person that experience of what it's like to be an artist, to be totally mind melded with what you're creating. When you're creating something as an artist, you stop thinking about yourself and you just become the medium itself. People want to be creators and makers. You make a visual experience that's like an instrument where you can immediately touch it and get some kind of response, but you can actually get better at it. So sometimes people call these visual instruments. They figure that out you know, with tweets, <laughs> with writing, <laughs> with camera phones for photography. There's a way to do it for music, and you can see it in some of the stuff that we've done. We're at the 1% level. There's like 99 more percent of interactive music for people to experience. But this will happen because it's so pleasurable and makes it so that you can see what it's like to, to turn the dials at a high level, like the way a conductor does. And to be a conductor, you just have to know everything down to the ground. But with these apps, it's actually possible to be a kind of conductor without knowing everything down to the ground. I think it's a really exciting moment, not necessarily for the music industry who's scared, but for music in general. 
The thing that really keeps me motivated is seeing other people's response to work and that it had some positive effect on them. I make useless programs. They're as useless as a song, <laughs> a story, a movie. There's no other purpose except to convey an idea, to change your mood, to say something about the human condition. And that's the kind of uselessness that I believe in.